In a previous video, we talked about democracy, how it's ruled by the people, but most people just don't have the time or interest to actually rule effectively. So instead, we have representative democracy, where the community chooses one person to do all that work for them. But how do we choose our representative? While people can run in an election without belonging to a political party, we call them an independent candidate, most candidates belong to a political party. Why, you ask? Well, let me tell you. Political parties are a group of people who've gotten together to create an association where they can discuss their opinions on various issues. These people have similar values, so they'll be more right-wing or left-wing. But the hope of any political party is to be the government. That means they need to win the most seats in the legislature. Remember that discussion we had about how the Prime Minister gets his job? If not, go back and watch the video on the branches of government. Each party has what we call a platform. This is the outline of the policies that they think are most important. Political parties will create platforms on issues like the environment, education, social programs, taxation, military spending, foreign policy, and on and on. These ideas will then be advertised to attract more party members. At each election, the local branch of the party will decide which member of the group should represent the party in an upcoming election. The party will then support that person in that election campaign, helping them to raise money and get the word out that people should vote for this candidate. It takes a lot of time and money to win an election campaign, so the candidates need the help from that political party. The hope of any party, though, is to get the most candidates elected across the whole country into the House of Commons. If you have the most representatives, you get to be the government. And if the party gets to be the government, they'll use their party platform to decide what laws need to be passed. Canadians take both the candidate and the party into consideration when we vote. We look at the candidate because we don't want some schmo to be representing our region. We need somebody we can trust and who will be a good representative of our community. But we also look at the party and their platform because we know that the candidate will do what the party tells them to. After all, it was the party that helped him get elected. We call this party solidarity. Many Canadians can get frustrated by party solidarity because it means that the party member must think of what the party wants before considering what the constituents who elected him want. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Because of party solidarity, the voters can have the confidence that the ideology of the party will be followed. If I vote conservative, I expect that candidate to follow the conservative policy, which is more right-wing. Or if I vote NDP, I'm going to expect the same thing, that they'll follow the left-wing NDP policies. This also relates to why so few people run as an independent. Not only is it more difficult to create your own election campaign team and raise your own money, Canadians are also wary of someone who doesn't belong to a party. In our legislatures, members of parties sit together and the largest party gets to be the government to create the laws. So if you're an independent, you don't have anyone else to sit with, and so you could literally sit in the back corner and have really no say on the laws being created. So while many Canadians don't necessarily like the idea of party solidarity, because it means our local representatives are often more loyal to their party than us, it also means that the candidate can't go rogue and do whatever they want. Let me give you an example. When the GST was being passed, it was actually a conservative government that was introducing it. Which is weird, because conservatives are supposed to be right-wing, which means they want less taxes. Albertans, who are right-wing, were especially opposed to this sales tax, but our conservative MPs had to support the bill because of party solidarity. Now, David Kilgore, Pat Nowlin, and Alex Kinney decided, no, I'm going to represent the views of my constituents, and I'm going to vote against this. But because they didn't follow party solidarity, they got kicked out of the party and had to sit as independents in the House of Commons. While Kilgore chose to join the Liberal Party and was re-elected, both Nolan and Kindy remained as independents, and in the end, they weren't re-elected. Many say this was because the people in those regions, while they liked being represented, still want their candidate to be able to sit with the governing party, and that can't happen if the candidate you elect is an independent. Canada has dozens of political parties, so we say that we're a multi-party system. Why so many parties? Because we're a diverse country with a lot of different ideas. We want to be able to support a party that fits best with our ideology or beliefs. By having several different parties to choose from, minority groups can feel like they have a chance to be heard. There's five main federal parties in Canada in 2014. I'm mentioning the year because things can change and often do. Right now, we have the two dominant parties that have been around in one way or another since Confederation, the Conservatives and the Liberals. The Conservatives, who used to be the Progressive Conservatives, or members of the Reform, or members of the Alliance, like I said, things change, they want people to depend more on themselves rather than the government. So they're individualists. They want to conserve or protect tr traditional values that are often related to Christianity. The other party that's been around since Confederation is the Liberal Party, who's more of a center party. They want more government intervention than the Conservatives, but not as much as the NDP. Now, being raised here in Alberta, I was told that the Liberal Party was left-wing. But that's because Alberta is a right-wing province, and everything on a spectrum is relative. Then we have the NDP, or New Democrats, who started to gain support in the 80s. 
They're truly a left-wing party in Canada, wanting more of an interventionist society. At first, the NDP were seen a bit more like socialist crackpots. But today, young people are really drawn to the ideas of personal freedom and greater government support for social programs. The Bloc Québécois, which was created in 1990, only exists in Quebec because their focus is on gaining sovereignty for Quebec, so their candidates aren't going to get a whole lot of votes here in Alberta. Their political platforms in regards to the economy and personal freedoms are similar to the NDP. And finally, there's the Green Party, which just had their first candidate elected to Parliament in 2011. They're Green Parties around the world, but they're only recently gaining support here in Canada. As was mentioned before, Canadian attitudes are changing, and one area of change is the concern for the environment. 30 years ago, if you were an environmental activist, you were seen as a crazy person. Recycling? Why would you sort your garbage? Now the Green Party is more than just looking at environment. They also have a platform that seeks to balance economic freedom with the need for social change. So they're usually left of the Conservative Party and right of the NDP. I say usually because parties can change their platforms. Let's finish off with a quick look at the U.S. Like us, the Americans have dozens of political parties, but because only two parties really get any support, we call it a two-party system. This can be really good because there's no such thing as minority governments. We're going to talk about that in a future video. The downside to a two-party system is that there's less choice, and those two main parties usually sit pretty close to the center of the spectrum because they want to get as many votes as possible from the people in the center. Those are the people who don't see themselves as left-wing or right-wing. And if you choose to vote for somebody other than the Democratic or Republican Party, it's called a protest vote because there's no way your candidate is going to get enough support to win. The Democratic Party is the left-wing party in the U.S. Again, left-wing is a relative term on the spectrum because the party platform of the Democrats in the U.S. is nowhere near as left-wing as the NDP party here in Canada. Supporters of this party want to see more government programs to even out the disparity, to make life more fair for those members of society who are struggling. Many Democrats would like to see the implementation of government programs that we have here in Canada, like universal health care. The ideas of the Republican Party are very similar to Canada's Conservative Party, although Canada's Conservative Party is still actually a bit left of the Republicans, because Canadian Conservatives wouldn't want to see something like fully privatized health care. Republicans argue that the best thing to do for society is to have people be self-reliant and compete with each other. If the government's always there to give people a handout, how are people going to strive to be better? And by taxing the more fortunate to help the less fortunate, you're really just punishing those people who are working really hard. Okay, one last thing before we're done. We always have to consider the context of a word to make sure we know what we're talking about. Remember how we talked about how federal can be a word that means the sharing of powers, but the federal government means the central government in Canada? Well, the name of a political party can also have another meaning, like how I mentioned earlier that the word conservative means to conserve or keep. So when we talk about these terms, we'll use the phrase little c to mean the word to conserve or conservative, and big c to mean the political party. The meaning of little l liberal means to be free, but big l liberal means the government party who wants to encourage the use of social programs. Little d democrat means you just believe in democracy, so pretty well all of us could be said to be democrats. And little r republican means to have an elected head of state, so all Americans are little r republicans, but less than half of Americans would call themselves big r republicans. Does it make sense? All right, let's leave it at that.